our two next panelists teach chemistry at Henri Lorenzo, Cégep Carlin Cormier. Um, he has done a lot of uh, research and educational research, notably on inverted classrooms and scientific communication in an oral uh, 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 forum. And one of the priorities is that research results apply in professional practice. Bruno Voisard, also coordinator of the chemistry department, put in place many pedagogical practices that are innovative in his classes, like inverted classroom, portfolio, evaluation by interview, and methods for alternative grading. They are here today to share with you a panorama of different uh, means and suggestions to start implementing it one step at a time. Caroline and Bruno, it's all yours. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, everybody. Hello, uh, thank you for inviting us, giving us uh, this forum. Uh, we're very honored to, to uh, follow such a great speaker. And contrary to Jesse, we don't do ungrading or alternative practices for grading for 20 years like he does, but we um, have done traditional practices uh, for grading all our career. And a few years ago, we started alternative practices. So I'm going to share my screen. And I would say, Jad, uh, or somebody, if you can uh, let me know if you can see everything. Yes, thank you. OK, so our presentation today, of course. The, uh, of the evaluation and maybe um, less uh, harm or less affect the results of supporting education. So we are trying to have a panorama, um, a picture, uh, a very succinct one of some of the practices. Uh, Jesse presented some of them. Um, there are practices of grading that allows us to evaluate differently and uh, let uh, you see the uh, marking uh, based on mastery or standards that are inspired by uh, old uh, work from Benjamin Bloom that is well known for his taxonomy uh, at the college level. So these is work that's very interesting and that has led to other methods for grading uh, based on standards. There's grading uh, by specification, by contract, where um, a bit of... where Jesse talked about the final grades are given dependent on uh, predefined criteria, their productions that are proposed, some uh, things that they have to produce, and 
the uh, students have to produce certain things that correspond to a certain grade uh, that they would like to have. So the grade based on that mastery or standards, that's a grading where we evaluate instead of adding up points throughout uh, the semester, we give a final grade depending on the degree of reaching the objectives, the learning objectives. So we can see how it's different from traditional grading later on. And then there's uh, grading, not as a critical structure, but as a practice uh, that uh, when we do grading or ungrading as a practice, we go towards uh, more qualitative feedback, where uh, all the evaluation, auto evaluation, uh, peer evaluation. So that is what we define as being ungrading as a practice. So when we talk about the symbol, which is the grade, the grade uh, is not necessarily a grade like a letter or a value as a percentage. This grade can take other forms. Of course, um, at the college level, we have to, depending on the regulations in the college, uh, to give a percentage and the passing grade is 60% at the end of the semester. But throughout the semester, we can find other ways uh, to uh, grade to avoid harming uh, uh, the learning, the education. So, how do we implement alternative practices? Well, we will look at four elements that affect the grading and that can influence the way we want to grade. First, the grade is not enough feedback. If we want to pay more attention on feedback, it's the first element. And uh, great if you want to have a more uh, fair uh, evaluation of the uh, reaching the objectives of the class, the uh, grade should not be uh, tarnished by behavior. So that can influence the way we work with grading and that can bring us to uh, get, go further away from practice where we want to encourage or discourage the behaviors with grading. And then the final grade, uh, depending on what we've learned, what has been uh, reached as far as the objectives go, so maybe we can ask some questions uh, with regards to the value of adding points in different uh, assignments as a way to evaluate the final grade. And maybe the most important element that we want to talk about is when we do alternative practices for grading, well, we have to give many chances to demonstrate uh, uh, learning. And if error is part of learning, we're not going to penalize mistakes made through a learning process where learning... Uh, uh, that can affect learning uh, that follows that. So the, what we propose is these four elements that we will detail one at a time. We will try to illustrate each of these elements with different experiences uh, that we have in our classes. Um, so I'm very well aware we can't explain the whole system that we put in place in chemistry for uh, organic chemistry or nursing chemistry, but in different classes, we have put in place different practices that are taken from different uh, sources. So I, I use different uh, a lot as well, just like Jesse, because I think it's relevant to talk about that. But of course, you can ask questions, specific questions on our implementation model. If we don't have time to answer, we uh, will uh, be able to get back to you with answers. So the first two elements, when we talk about the grade, that's not uh, feedback or that is not sufficient uh, feedback, the reflection behind that we could ask is, is it really necessary to give marks to all activities of evaluation? For example, if we do a small exam that wants to prepare another exam, we want the students to come and do the short exam. We think that it will prepare them for the bigger one. Is it necessary to give grades in this exam that wants to prepare another exam? So maybe a lab report or a small a short essay. In science, we have that small lab report, short reports for each experiment. Is it really worth giving grades to each of those instances? Is it the best way to be able to support education, learning, and even to uh, uh, capture their uh, achievements or um, what they've learned? So part of our thinking is, the evaluation by interview, Sarah was talking about that earlier. Um, we generally, to prepare our students for the certification interview, we give them short interviews. Is it worth giving grades there as well? So this whole idea of giving grades 
for evaluation that serve to prepare something else. So what uh, we looked at uh, really, what we're using now is to not give grades on all these small evaluations, but that doesn't mean that these small evaluations remain because they serve to position these students with regards to their degree of reaching the objectives of the course. So there's no grade, but there's still uh, feedback. So a detailed feedback, it's individualized. It talks about the task at hand. It is given to the uh, students in writing. So it allows them to have uh, something that is much more rich and that speaks to them much more. A feedback that we simply gave them a grade for this work, but also ultimately for others. So uh, maybe it's a first part of implementation and to uh, for degrading or ungrading as a practice. So it's not necessarily to, if we don't feel very comfortable to do so, it's maybe not necessary to change the whole class course, but maybe think about this kind of thing. Maybe it's not necessarily something that needs to be graded, uh, that we need to be graded. It doesn't mean that students shouldn't do it, but the feedback is more of a verbal nature, uh, of a, uh, a written nature, and, it, and, it, and to uh, accompany the feedback with a grade, as demonstrated in 2019, a study receiving a grade can harm intrinsic modification, particularly for students who have difficulties. So people where our feedback would really be useful to orient them, to help them go in the right direction in their progression. And those students that have difficulty, uh, they would get less benefit because their intrinsic motivation would be penalized by receiving the grade, which is strikes them harder than written comments, even if they're positive comments, uh, or uh, some uh, uh, strategies to help them uh, continue to progress. So to reduce intrinsic motivation, but also I think everybody knows students uh, uh, saw their grades, they're not gonna read the comments and they don't consider them sometimes. So, and they reproduce the mistakes that we talked about in comments uh, uh, over and over again. So if the grade blinds them to our comments, maybe there's another way to give them feedback and uh, knowing that the grade is related to reducing intrinsic motivation. And the, the second part is the grade shouldn't talk about behavior. Um, it's like the more severe part of our presentation today is no, I'm not gonna do that. But at the same time, take that with a grain of salt, but it's the one who that personally, uh, I find it's difficult to implement, I still do. Um, some people who come in late to hand in their work late, absent the materials in the lab, or a non-motivated absence uh, with the, for a test or evaluation, is all that part of the uh, objectives of the program? Is that part of the profile? Uh, no, it's not part of the content of the class. It's not part of my uh, plan. It's not what I'm teaching. So it shouldn't be affecting the final grade of my students. It, for me, I found that shocking to not penalize students that uh, came into the lab with no lab jacket, for example. But we have to uh, take this posture of equity in evaluation. It, these penalties on behaviors, it's shown that it penalizes students that are more vulnerable, those who are socioeconomically unfavored, those who are from a minority situation or a vulnerable situation. So that reduces, uh, uh, well, just you want to say that earlier, so to, uh, See that in a class context. So the, the, the marking must indicate the uh, reaching of the objectives of the class and not be contaminated by penalties that uh, uh, are affected by behavior. So that's a question of the uh, fidelity of the evaluation. So if we see that our marks reflect, our grading reflect what the, the have learned in our class and what the students learn, that is what is in the course uh, plan and the objectives of the program, of our courses. So the grade should count only on those elements.
a way to improve the fidelity of the grade another in another way but that improves the fidelity of the grade is the reduction of the number of gradations so instead of questioning ourselves on the distinction between 95 or 96 reduce the number of gradations to one two three gradations as we said earlier in our class uh, so in most of our classes in chemistry in our department we have two uh, grades uh, so can be improved or still improving up until we get to the next level which is mastery so the that's what they're called they're very well described still learning and mastery so what we could call a grid it's not really a grid um, but um, it can describe what we can observe with our students that reach that level of mastery and um, so the students can do or the capacities that they can demonstrate. So it reduces the bias and uh, it improves the fidelity intra evaluators. So one copy of the other. I um, um, each teacher that corrects uh, have, has a more fidelity if there's less gradation and the fidelity inter evaluator as well. So me and my colleague, we would tend to grade, uh, I'm not talking about giving a grade, but to situate the, uh, so to grade at the same level, if there's only two grades, uh, two gradations, if I give the same feed of my colleague and he corrects it and he comes to 76 and I uh, arrive at 82, uh, the you understand the difficulty here. So the introduction of bias. Bruno? It's maybe a way to operationalize some of the things that we said up to now. Uh, there's one of the things that the Conseil Superior d'Education said, the Superior d'Education, the grades are very poor in information. So um, it, when we say that grades are not sufficient feedback, well, if we want to use a grade to situate our student or evaluation that are summative to situate our students and that the result of this evaluation is a grade in percentage, for example. Well, it's uh, poor in information. It doesn't say what needs to be improved. It doesn't say what steps we should take or what should be accomplished for the next part of the semester. So there are some proposals that are made by certain people who defend the idea of using alternative practice for grading that is to inform more and more and more informed by the evaluation targets of our classes. For example, a student uh, can be in learning one aspect and can have uh, completed their learning on another aspect. So if I say 13 out of 20 on exam number one, it doesn't give us that information, it doesn't give the information to students on what they should uh, uh, place their attention on on this aspect or other aspects of the class. So the grade and percentage doesn't give that information. So that's why um, we can say uh, to think about the uh, qualitative uh, feedback. We were talking about ways of reducing the number of gradations using three, four, maybe two levels, two gradations to talk about the degree of reaching the objectives of the class. So that's a way to express it. And uh, then we can use uh, this type of portrait to um, independently of how we uh, put together the final grade, we can use a table like this one to uh, have an analysis that is more of a global nature to uh, evaluate the degree of mastery or of reaching the objectives and then we put that together with uh, regards with a percentage independently on the type of method we use to build the final grade. And um, as I was saying, maybe the most important element, if we want to have an evaluation that's more equitable, that doesn't depend on the uh, experience or the um, of the student, but to uh, be more fair, it's the students that come into our classes uh, with a less preparation, 
uh, should we penalize them for less preparation? Sometimes we say we help our students by doing this and giving them an evaluation at the beginning of the session to uh, to uh, uh, motivate them, extra uh, intrinsic modification. So week four, week five, I do a summative uh, evaluation to give them grades. But what I'm doing, I'm advantaging students that have a better progression. Sometimes students that are more uh, socioeconomically advantaged or somebody that had better preparation in high school and uh, better high school. So the grades I'm going to give in the beginning of the uh, semester, that will penalize or color the final grade. And that influences uh, because of the past history of the student that uh, I modulate the final grade depending on the student's history or experience. So to help with the power we have as teachers, one of the methods we can do is to give lots of opportunities to uh, demonstrate learning without penalizing. So there's different strategies. We can offer many opportunities to demonstrate uh, uh, things learned, to have evaluations that evaluate the same objective the same targets for learning uh, and to have uh, possibilities of revision. So if it's an essay, for example, and we give comments and we revise uh, the, and we give comments to uh, on their work so they can continue improving their practice. If we ask them to uh, uh, change things depending on our feedback and we'll encourage them, if we give them possibilities to improve instead of giving a mark and sanction the performance, it gives possibilities to follow up with their learning and to keep learning and improving things. And the strategy number three that we're presenting here is to give a holistic view on uh, what we've done throughout the semester and the different things that have been learned, maybe in giving more weight to, to uh, things that are later on in the semester uh, compared to earlier iterations of evaluation. So. That's uh, it for us. I would present our research team as well because they're here today with us, with whom we work on this project. We will now take some questions in a second. Before uh, starting to answer them, the I will let Bruno look at the chat and choose one or two questions. But if you're interested in discussing these things with us, we have a, a community of practice and uh, 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 let's say it's uh, nascent, it's starting out, but we meet virtually and we discuss alternative practices for grading in um, a specific context, so all our different contexts. So uh, if you want to participate, you can contact us. Our emails are on the slide there, where uh, which you will receive uh, uh, by email. Um, everybody will receive that. So I will stop here. And uh, these are the reference. Uh, so I will stop sharing the screen. Bruno, have you chosen some questions? Maybe uh, it will uh, put certain questions together. The idea or do we have to give partial grades mid uh, uh, semester or how do we work with that with the Omnivox system? So uh, for me and my classes, what I do is I give a grade or something that indicates that an objective has been reached when it's reached. So I have a colleague, Francois, who is part of our research team that likes to say uh, 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 evaluation is normative until the uh, 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 objective is demonstrated. So uh, we leave opportunities as, uh, until the semester ends, but we have opportunities to demonstrate reaching an objective, uh, educational objective, when they when that's been done, we recognize it and indicate it. Uh, let's say limit that uh, something that Jesse is interested in. I'm sure we could have discussed that the learning managing systems that we call them uh, in English. And these are Omnivox, uh, for example, is a tool like that where there are limits when you want to do practices for alternative evaluation. So with this kind of system, but uh, depending on uh, the context there could be some differences for us we don't are not obligated to give a grade we give a grade when the uh, objective has been demonstrated if not we don't uh, assign it 
I don't know if you want to take a question of the uh, uh, reaching objectives. What is it? Uh, is it always 100%? How do we decide? For us, reaching the objective is 80. So we teach chemistry. Some things are easy to measure in chemistry. For example, when you ask to draw molecules and they have to have four out of five. So no, it's not 100 because we don't expect everybody to be perfect. But mastery uh, of a an objective is the expression for us of our professional judgment, but it's operationalized in a system that works well. So I know what students in my class have mastered what they need to master so they can go to the next level. And before alternative practices, sometimes I would drop the ball. Sometimes people had mastered, but were not at 60 and others were at 60 and they had some things missing that they didn't master yet. So for me, implementing alternative practices for grading, that's what uh, uh, really um, interested me and wanted to try it because I was capable of having a system that allows me to exercise professional judgment in a very transparent way for the students. People know exactly what they must work on and what they must improve. And for me, when I give the final grade in the class, I'm certain that the students that go to the next level, they've mastered the uh, essential ability. But we can also consider if we have more than one level on how to evaluate, the target can be the second uh, gradation. And we compose the final grade depending on the grades, the gradations or the levels that were uh, attained with the different uh, objectives uh, of the course.